Welcome to episode 21 of Design Curious Podcast. I'm your host and mentor, Rebecca Ward. Today, I am talking to you about the pros and cons of residential design, what residential design really means to me, why I love it, why you may or may not love getting into residential design, and it really brings up some points you might want to consider and help you decide whether uh, residential interior design is the career for you or whether you want to go into commercial design. So let's get into it today. You're now listening to Design Curious, a place where you, creative one, are here to learn about what it really is like to be an interior designer. And I'm your host and mentor, Rebecca Ward. If you're worried about how to succeed in a creative career, if you're ready to learn your next steps to become an interior designer, and if you want the satisfaction of doing something you love every day, you are in the right place. Grab a coffee, a notebook, and let's dig into today's episode. So I was thinking about this topic the other day as I was planning out the different podcasts that I wanted to talk about. And I was thinking about some of the things that I really like about residential design. Like, why does it resonate with me so much? And why do I enjoy it so much as opposed to um, going in the direction of commercial design? And I thought of the idea of home. And I thought that there's nothing more intimate and meaningful than home. Home is supposed to nurture you and take care of you. It restores you before you go out in the world. And when there's something wrong with your home, you're not functioning at full capacity and it needs to be fixed. And a designer is there to help fulfill that need. And I was just thinking about what joy I can bring to people as their home designer and being able to maximize their lives and really help them be the best that they can be in their lives by having a home base from which they go forth that really restores and renews them. So the whole concept of home and nurturing just really, I think, connects with me on a deep and personal level that just helps me be passionate about residential design and wanting to help other people have homes that they love. So let me talk a little bit more about residential design pros and cons. So I'll talk about the pros first. One of the things that I love about residential design is the amount of creativity that you can express in it. Custom everything is possible in home, as well as the range of styles. And I mean, every home is unique and different depending on who the owner is. And so it's so fun to take on these projects that change every single time. Every project is a new thing. I'm using new materials and new uh, sources and colors are different and textures and the needs are all different. And so I think the variety and the creativity is what draws me to it. Uh, On the other side of commercial design, I am sure that there's a lot of creativity, but maybe not as much variety. When I think about maybe like education where you're doing a lot of space planning, which is, I guess, not the thing that I love the most about design. (laughs) I love working with the finishes and fixtures and materials and um, the materials selections that you have to do for educational or corporate design is very limited. I mean, you have to choose from this vinyl floorings and this commercial carpet and this rubber base and these paint colors. Um, And I just don't think that that would really satisfy my cravings as a designer. But you know, those people that really love this base planning part of it and figuring out that puzzle, that might be what does it for them. But personally, as a residential designer, I don't think I would feel quite as fulfilled. So residential design really allows me to explore all the textures and colors and fabrics and materials and finishes that I could ever want to explore. The other advantage of residential design is that you typically have a single decision maker in the project. It might be a couple who own the house, but your client is that couple or that homeowner. And whereas with commercial design, oftentimes you're meeting with a board, you have to get board approval from 5, 10, 20 people. And trying to get them all to agree on something is extremely challenging. Whereas if you're only working with one or two people, 
and try and get them to make a decision. And you spend time getting to know that person and knowing, you know, what their needs are and what they're looking for and how to communicate effectively with them. Then it's, I think, much easier. Perhaps it's because I'm a high S on the DISC assessment. So I like to relate with people and understand how they're feeling. And it might be a little bit easier for me to to work with people uh, one-on-one like that. Another pro I would say is that you get direct feedback and responses on your design and the satisfaction of your client. For example, like you get to have that reveal, like that (laughs) quintessential HGTV reveal where the client can walk into the space and they're just blown away by the work that you've done and how it's changed their life. And, you know, maybe people are getting emotional. And I kind of love that part of it. It's satisfying for me. I don't know, maybe it's an ego stroke, but it just to see someone appreciate the work that you've done in person is just really nice to have. Whereas if you're designing maybe a commercial space like a restaurant, or a cafe, you know that a lot of people are going to be in there enjoying it, but you don't actually get to talk to those people necessarily and see how they on a personal level love the space and what they think about the tile choice that you made. And so I love getting that feedback from my clients. And that's something that I get out of residential design. And then I also love incorporating personal details of the client. So maybe they travel a lot and you can incorporate artwork that they've collected or they have a favorite color, and then you're trying to incorporate that into the design. So I love making a space really personal for the client. So those are all things that, um, I think there's probably many more aspects of residential design, but those are probably some of the top things that I really love that were motivations for me to choose residential design as my focus in my career. Some of the cons that come up when people think about residential design or that maybe, you know, my professor said while I was in college. But one of the things that comes up most frequently is the hand holding that you need to do with your residential clients. It's often very challenging for them to visualize the design like you can. You have to walk them through step by step to kind of see how and why you chose the things that you did, how it's going to help them in their life, why they need to spend so much money on such and such, which is the focal point of the room. And you kind of have to walk them through and hold their hand as they might be hesitant, as they might be fearful to spend money on that, or as they just don't understand where you're coming from. So that does take a good amount of patience with the client. (laughs) as they are walking through that process. And you have to do that almost every time with every client. But that's, you know, like I said before, that's one of the personal things I really love with the client is actually taking them through that process. One of the cons um, could also be that things might tend to get personal. So if you have a client that doesn't like your design, and it's rejected, I think it's because you have a closer relationship with that client, the designer can tend to sometimes take it personally that they don't like a certain thing about the design. Whereas in a commercial setting, you might be like, the board decided that red was not the right color. Well, you're not going to really take that personally, you're just going to shift and change directions. But when you're thinking so deeply about your clients and how they're going to live in the space, I mean, I really get in there and envision like, okay, my client is walking into the kitchen on a Sunday morning and this is, they're getting their coffee and then they like to sit over here with the dog. And, you know, as you're visualizing this, and then if they don't agree with that design that you've visualized, it can be difficult to receive that. So that's something that I probably coached myself on over the years. Now it doesn't bother me as much as it used to. But, you know, some there are times when I've become attached to a certain aspect of the design that the client decides not to go forward with. And um, it can be disappointing. Another downside of residential design is because you're working so personally with these clients is that there might be a conflict of personalities they might be argumentative, or they might be not great communicators. So there can be drama that develops around a project, hopefully not, but there is potential for that. And so that is one of the advantages of really studying personality types, understanding conversation styles, and 
different methods of selling to people. And I really enjoy getting into that. I love all the personality tests and understanding um, everyone's personality. So I enjoy that part of it, but there may be people who don't. And so that would maybe be a hindrance for them to actually have to think about what is a person's communication style and how can I modify mine to work better with my client. And then kind of like I said before, the subjective opinions of the client, whereas you might have a piece of art that you picked out for the space that goes perfectly, it looks great with the design, all the colors work, but then the client just doesn't resonate with that piece of art. They don't like it. And so then you have to go back to the drawing board and pick a new one. And I suppose that could happen in a commercial setting, but more likely in commercial design or even with model homes, I felt like we had a lot more autonomy with our designs because we were just pleasing the builder and the directors in charge of building the models and not necessarily a particular client. So we had a lot of autonomy on you know, what style the house was going to be in, the details that we were including in the house. Um, and we just kind of got to do whatever we wanted to do with that. Whereas your client is definitely going to have opinions about specific items. So that's why I spent a lot of time up front getting to know my client, getting to know their design style, their personality, and really getting a lot of feedback from them up front so that I know that they're going to love the pieces that I select for them in their design. So those are just a few pros and cons about residential design. But like I said, I really think that... For me, I do love getting to know my clients and really working with them on a personal level. And I think that's an important thing to know about residential design, that if you like relating with people and working with them one-on-one, then that's going to be a big part of what you're doing. I suppose if you did have a larger firm, you could kind of have your senior designers or other people be the point of contact with your clients if that's not something that you love to do, but you could oversee it and kind of be the design director, but not necessarily the person relating to the clients. That could be a workaround if that's not your forte of handholding with your clients. But that's my two cents on residential design and why I love it. I hope that was helpful to kind of clarify my own personal reasons uh, why I do residential design and maybe some insight as to what it takes to be a residential designer and, you know, working with your clients one-on-one. Just some food for thought for those trying to discover if interior design is the career for them. You can get all the details in our show notes at rwarddesign.com forward slash podcast. I would love to get any suggested topics from you that you'd love to hear on the podcast. You can email me podcast at rwarddesign.com. And don't forget to leave me five star ratings and reviews. I love getting those and seeing what it is that you're enjoying about Design Curious Podcast. And I might share those sometimes here um, on the podcast. So if you'd like to leave me a review and let me know you're listening and what you enjoy, if there's a specific episode, call that out. I'd love to just hear your feedback on those things. So have a great week. Stay tuned for another great interview next week on Design Curious. And we'll see you then, creative one. Thanks for listening. If you love this episode, please leave a rating and a review. This helps me reach other curious creatives like you. If you have a topic request or would like to contact me, simply head over to my website, rwarddesign.com or email me at podcast at rwarddesign.com.